All right, so as you recall, we looked at creating a uh, rapid prototype web page with uh, Yeoman and Twitter Bootstrap. And uh, that was our last video. And we, we elected to use boilerplate, or, or rather vanilla CSS, um, when Yeoman asked us whether we wanted to use Compass and SAS. We opted out. But this time, let's go ahead and look at Compass and SAS. We'll take a look outside of the Yeoman ecosystem. Um, it's probably useful to look at these things directly first, become familiar with them. So if you've installed Comp I mean uh, Yeoman, you actually have Compass and SAS installed because uh, Yeoman verifies that before it lets you have a successful install. So sure enough, yes, we have SAS and Compass installed. Let's generate a new Compass project with Compass create test and CD into test. So now if we look at what happened, we generated a bunch of files here and we got some directions. We'll ignore those for now. But let's open this up in our text editor and have a look. So we've got a SAS directory and a style sheets directory and we can see the names of our files correspond with just different file extensions. .scss is the SAS extension that we're using and then .css are the files that get generated. There's a config.rb which turns out to be pretty important if you're going further with this. Basically just maps the directories uh, in this case because everything else here is commented out. We won't get into um, all the configuration options, but the ones I want you to look at here, CSS directory is style sheets and our SAS directory is SAS. Makes sense, that's what we saw on the file system. Um, and before I get into actually coding stuff up, I just want to say that SAS is the language that we're using, uh, the preprocessor language and, and ability to, to compile that into CSS. Whereas Compass is a framework and tool around SAS that um, that gives you a workflow. Like as you recall, we said Compass create test. Uh, so that's a workflow thing that Compass is giving you, and uh, we'll see some other stuff later. But um, just so you're not confused, uh, SAS is the language and the ability. Uh, SAS has the compiler and. and generates the CSS from the SAS and all that stuff. Compass is the framework and tool that we're, we're using uh, around it. Um, so if we look at this screen.css we're in, we see one line. Uh, uh, the rest of this is, this is just a comment. But this line here is an import, imports the reset. And sure enough, when we open up the corresponding screen.css, we see what looks like a looks to be a, a CSS reset, right? So that one line gave us that. And what we can do is comment that line out, save the file. Actually, let's go over here and um, start our Compass watch. Okay, so now Compass is watching any changes made here. We save, and you can see, well, I'd already saved, so not much has, ha has happened, but our reset's been removed from here. So if I put that back in, you can see Compass Watch is rewriting to the file and we're gonna see our resets back in there. So let's take that, let's comment that out for now and take a look at some of the, the core language features in, in SAS. Uh, first thing I think is pretty neat is variables. You don't get variables in uh, true variables in CSS, right? But in SAS, uh, I can do something like this and use this variable and this uh, this will expand to nine, uh, hex 999. This can be seen there. Pretty neat stuff. I can also um, add hex. So in hex after nine isn't 10, it's A, B, and C. So sure enough, oops, sure enough, that's reflected in the generated uh, generated CSS. Let's just try four. We should we expect to see D 
and so on, right? That's pretty neat. Um, you can imagine defining all your headers and constants at the top of your file for a website early on and then uh, just use these variables and not uh, have to worry about going and changing things in a million different places. Another neat thing that you get from SAS is, is nesting. So you can imagine in a typical uh, CSS you'll have this kind of stuff, right? And you'll keep defining out like that. And it gets to pretty, pretty ugly and unruly. Uh, in SAS, I can just use nested blocks like this, right? And this isn't legal CSS syntax, but SAS will take care of generating the, the correct uh, the correct CSS for us with that. So that's nice. It becomes a lot easier to reason about your code. I um, mean, you know, this can be abused as well, um, but but it's definitely a step in the right direction. So we've looked at variables and, and some basic uh, math. And by the way, with the math, you can do a lot more interesting stuff like uh, calculating the dimensions of pages with percentages and M's and things like that. We won't get into that here, but it's available. Um, we've looked at, uh, at, uh, at nested blocks. And let's have a look at mixins. So a mixin is easiest to describe by just showing you. So you use this ampersand mixin keyword and then your identifier. And we're going with my font. And then you can create some font stuff. We'll say size is 14 pixels. Uh, family is uh, times, whatever, right? So now if we save that, um, we can or actually, let's, we need to use it. So to use the mixin, we use at include and then the name of the mixin. And so those are the two, those are two keywords that you have to use when you define the mixin, the at mixin, and when you use it, you include it. Um, so what, what we're hoping will happen here is that all of this will expand in here. So sure enough, if we have a look, that's what happened, right? So our my font stuff exp expanded in here. So that's really cool. You can imagine with all the confusing CSS3 uh, syntax for box box shadows and border radiuses and things like that. Uh, this this makes life a lot easier. And in fact, Compass and even Twitter Bootstrap define a lot of really neat mixins. Uh, we'll have a look at those later, but um, it's just a great feature to have available when you're when you're dealing with your CSS. So that covers the core topics I wanted to look at with SAS and, and using Compass. Um, we'll maybe get a little deeper into some of the, the mixins we just discussed. Uh, maybe we'll look at border radius and box shadow and some of those things in a future screencast. But I think this is enough to sort of get you started with Compass and SAS. And hopefully the next video we'll be able to return to um, seeing how that's used in Yeoman.